What's going on? What's going on? We're doing our daily care for our microgreens plants. So that's what I'm gonna dive right into. Give a moment for some uh, some folks to come on in, and then we will get started. 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 I appreciate all the love and all the support. As always, talking about growing microgreens, I'm gonna show you how I'm taking care of these mini grow trays. Uh, that way, if you wanna do the same thing at home, you'll be able to do the same thing at home. Don't intend to be here super long today, so we are going to dive right into it here in just a moment. If you could do me a favor, go ahead and double tap that screen. Let's go ahead and get the lights out of here, out of this world. I appreciate you as always. Appreciate you. We already almost said 50. Man, 60. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Let's get some more people in here so we can spread this good vibes, this good information. Help more people grow food at home. We're at 100 likes, so I'm going to dive right in. So, let me give you a quick overview. This tray was started three days ago, four days ago, three days ago, and two days ago. So you get them get to see them at different uh, phases of their growth. And uh, I'm going to show you what I do every day with my morning care routine. It's like my plants. I've gone away from my big grow rack to a tabletop. This is more like if you want to just grow some at home for yourself, for your own consumption, for your family. You can do it on something as small as this table. This table is only maybe two feet wide, two feet deep, foot and a half deep, something like that. You don't need a lot of space. And on this table, minus the seed, I have everything that I need. All right, so let's start with everything that you need. The first thing you need is a grow tray, which is this green tray and this white seed tray that goes inside, just like that. And if we get to a thousand likes, on this live I will plant a new tray live so you can see what's going on uh, you need to grow media I'm using jute mat j-u-t-e uh, you need some filtered water this is this bottle water I also have a water filter unit over here that I refill this with but if maybe you have some bottles of water at home you can use that you need a spray bottle and you can either use like mason jars or just the bottle water for your waste you can do it either way either way I'm just going to show you how I'm doing. All right, so let's move to, let's start with day two trade, what that looks like. So two days ago on live, I planted these uh, broccoli microgreens. So you can see they've started to sprout pretty well, but they still need to be underweight and in the dark. So you just take your spray bottle here, spray your microgreens down, about like that, and that's it. You take another tray, you put it on. Let me move this out of the way. You take different tray. So you can see I have this underneath this to catch the water, so you, you may need some extra trays. Or you can stack them. I'll show you another way. So let's say you had two trays, right? You can stack them like this. Then put your water on top, that works. Or if you wanna do them separate, you can do it this put your water tray in there boom now that's why we're at a thousand so i'll be sewing a, a a new tray this morning live show you how it's done so let's move on to tray two this tray is a, an advanced day into germination so you see it's half purple radish back here and this front half is spicy salad mix all right and i got all my seeds from true leaf market so for this, all we're going to do is again take our water bottle filled with filtered water and we're going to spray it down like this. Same as the first one, put it back, the tray back on top, put the weight on top. And in this case, a water bottle, boom, like this. But I need this later, so I'm going to put my mason jar. So you saw what was going on. I'll show you one more time. Two days ago, three days ago. Now, here's something more interesting. This one was started on Sunday morning. So I guess this is three, four days ago. Look at that, look at that. 
Uh, the grow medium is jute mat, J-U-T-E. So these bad boys are actually now ready to come out of weight and blackout. So these are under weight, and then yesterday I put them under blackout. So all blackout is, is you take that extra tray, and you put it on top, like this. You leave it like that for about a day. Now why am I doing that? I'm doing that to force the sprouts to get a little bit more leggy, meaning I want them to grow up, because because they're starving light, they're not undergoing photosynthesis. And they want to reach up to the sky to find that light. So put them under blackout forces them to do that. I uh, appreciate you coming here. We're going to run through it. We're going to plant a live tray here in just a moment. So we do that. So now we can take it out. I'm going to take my table mounted grow light here. I'm showing you how to do this on a small scale at home right now. So I'm going to kind of tilt it back like this because I don't want it to get in my other trays. And what I might do is put like a towel or something over this to keep it more so in the dark. Another thing you can do, if you don't have an extra tray, you can just put it, uh, you can just put your, uh, your seeds like in a dark closet or something like that. Or keep it in a very dark room. The dark, the blackout will work the same way. You don't need a tray, but sometimes I have extra lights going on in here, so I do that. So one time I just put like a towel over it. I can block off an area of my rack. You can do it different ways. So, uh, I'll show you the light here. It just clips onto the table like this. And uh, I'm going to turn it on. It's got a little control thing that comes with it. So, I'm going to turn the power on. The intensity is already turned the way up. I can adjust the intensity. I can adjust the color. But I'm going to keep it on the fullest setting it has. And it got three, nine, 12 hour settings. So, I'm going to go three, nine, 12. So now I don't really have to do anything else but water and keep an eye on things. So this is going to be 12 hours on, 12 hours off. I might want to run it around the clock. It's fine. Or I might just want to run it all day and when I'm doing my evening routine, turn it off, get it more hours. So my, on my rack, I usually grow it like a 17 on, 7 hour off cycle. This only lets me do 12 on, 12 off. So just do what you can. Make it easy on yourself. Uh, you do got to come in here twice a day anyway, so I might want to say, hey, let's just go to regular. I'm going to leave it on all day, and then when I get home in the evening, I will turn things off. And, uh, you know, start back from there. Hey, I appreciate all the love y'all are showing. If y'all watching, if y'all can hit that that light screen, double tap that screen. Let's get this thing up to 5,000. Let's get some more folks here to learn how to grow food at home. But what I'm teaching you how to grow is micro green so if you're just joining in this is the tray of broccoli stitch seeds <laughs> that i started on live uh four days ago on sunday so now they're ready to go into photosynthesis so they're just going to stay up here on this table under light this other tray i started three days ago on live it's half spicy salad mix half purple radish uh, you can see it's germinating well i would expect this tray to look like this other tray another day or two and then it will also go under light. And then this tray was actually started uh, just two days ago here on live. And that's it. So all we had to do to care for those plants is uh, we come in in the morning and in the evening. We got a spray bottle filled with organic water and you just spray them down, keep them moist. I've already done that. I don't want to overwater them. You do that, put weight back on it. You can use a water bottle, a mason jar filled with water, a little small brick, whatever you got. Small book, boom, boom. Same thing on this tray. I'm gonna field a couple questions. See, I grow indoors exclusively for these microgreens, so I don't really have to worry about uh, bug repellents and, and rodents and things. Uh, we don't have those issues in the house, so that's not something that I'm trying to protect against. However, uh, you may experience gnats from time to time, so I'm trying to find my gnat capture solution. And here it is, it's this warm water, about four ounces. This is evaporated off, so it's a little low. Um, warm water, about two tablespoons of table sugar, about 
uh, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, about five to 10 drops of Dawn soap, swirl it around. So that soap will serve as a surfactant. So gnats and small flying, you know, bugs will fly in there. You kind of see the bugs in there. Works really well. Uh, Non-toxic, takes care of those flying insects like gnats. Uh, why the weights? The weights are there to put some pressure on the seeds and it just helps them germinate like faster, more fully, get a better harvest at the end. Um, I don't know necessarily all the scientific reasons for that, but it is a best practice for microgreens, but my intuition lets me know that it's for um, simulating like the weight of being in the soil in a more natural environment, especially since these are growing hydroponically without soil. Now I do have a substrate, but it's not soil. All right, great. That's a great one. The orange pill and vinegar. Uh, I made some of that as like a household cleaner. I don't use distilled water. I use filtered water. So you can just use like filtered bottled water, purified water. Like this is the Costco brand. I also have, this is what I really use. I have this Brita style filter here. This is the, the Target brand. I got from Target. It was a little less expensive. And uh, I can just use this. You know, get tap water in a gallon jug, fill up the top, let it filter through. This will last me for four to six weeks. It's a lot less expensive than using bottled water. Um, kind of my thoughts on that is, my thought process on that is that the water that comes out of tap, it may have chlorine and fluoride and some of those other chemicals in there, maybe excess dissolved solids. Uh, you want to get most of that stuff out of there because my thought is, you know, the plants are only going to uptake what you give them. So if you give them that stuff, uh, they're going to uptake it. And then you're going to eat the plants and then you're going to uptake it. But if we have an opportunity to get that stuff out, hey, let's just get it out of there. Uh, I'm, I would recommend you start microgreen. So here I am. I'm inside of a bedroom in my house. This is like a little table, maybe two feet by one and a half feet, like a little folding table. So you can grow this stuff at home in a small amount of space. I have everything I need right here on this table, including a clip-on grow light. It clips right onto the table. All right. So as promised, you guys did your part a long time ago. I'm going to start a, uh, a tray. So a matter of fact, I'll just use this here. Uh, I'm going to be releasing these at-home grow kits soon enough. So I'm just gonna crack one of these open and show you how to use it. How does that sound? Yeah. You know, if you want a garden, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to do, you don't gotta have a lot of space. You know, I delayed years making progress towards growing food at home because I was like, I don't have enough space. I don't have enough yard. I don't have enough light. You know, these are all barriers that I built up mentally that prevented myself from making progress. And it was no external person or things fault. It was my own. I was psyching myself out. I was making myself feel discouraged. And when you feel discouraged, you won't make progress. And as I love to say, don't let perfection be the reason why you don't make progress. Also, Hence the name of this page, Urban Grower Supply. I believe that urban agriculture will be a significant player in the future of our food. You know, there's more and more people, especially here in America, moving into cities. We're becoming a more urban country. So it doesn't really make sense that we got to take our food from rural places and chunk them into urban places when we're all here in the city. We have extra buildings as it is. We all have extra space in our yards and our homes. So if we start generating more food in the city, will be much more sustainable it'll use a lot less resources think of it this way we're already controlling the environments that we live and work in we might as well grow the plants in there because it's a controlled environment we can control the outcomes to a higher extent which gives us a more stable food supply which gives us more nutritious foods which is a way that we can solve food deserts in communities where that is an issue like i live here in i'm sorry my band is up we live here, and I live here in uh, South Dallas County, and there's a lot of 
food deserts in my area. I'm fortunate not to live in one specifically, but there's a lot of my community members who are not as fortunate. So part of what I'm doing is growing my own knowledge and my own capability to provide fresh food, affordable food that's nutritious, that's available. Either they can purchase it from me or they can learn how to grow for themselves. I'm not one of those people that believes you gotta, you know, do things for a malintent or only for money. I believe that if I help enough people do the right things, do the things that they wanna do to become more self-sufficient, hey, we'll all be blessed. We'll all move forward. We'll all thrive and prosper. Let me see. Oh yeah, I'm sure it was the cowboy hat that gave it away. Yeah, I wake up every morning for 10 minutes and practice my e-haws. Uh, yeah, so I'm in the process of uh, starting to sell green. So I did a big harvest yesterday. I got all my sample packs together. So I'll be approaching some uh, some grocery stores and I'm also be vending at some farmers markets and pop-ups. I've already signed up for my area um, over, the, over the next you know, set of weeks. And just to give you a little bit more I think hopefully encouragement and motivation is 90 days ago I wasn't doing any of this so it just goes to show you that you can get into this you can learn to grow I've already grown probably a hundred trays in that time so it doesn't take a lot of time it doesn't take a lot of effort but you do got to be persistent it's helped me to reinforce my routine I have to get up every morning and give my plants what they need so like on these trays, it only takes a little bit of time, but I got to do it twice a day in the morning and about 12 hours later in the evening. About every 12 hours, I need to attend to my plants. Got to make sure they have enough water. I got to make sure that the seeds are right. Got to make sure the conditions are right. Give the plants what they need. Anyway, I feel like I'm dragging this out and I don't want to delay away. So like this kit I'm selling, it already has everything in it ready to go cut the side. So I got to do a lot of extra stuff. You worry about the routine, I understand. But farming will help you to develop patience. You gotta be patient and give the plants time to do what they need to do, and then you have to be consistent and persistent. When you put that together, that's diligence. So you gotta show up consistently to give them what they need, because if you don't for a day or two, hey, your plants might die. So you just gotta show up and give them that little bit of time. That will help you make time for yourself. Remember to be consistent and diligent for yourself as well. So, got my water here. I'm gonna spray down my mat, just like this. Just like this. This is kind of a small bottle, like an atomizing bottle. So it takes a little bit of time, but hey, we got time. We're practicing patience anyway. All right, we're gonna put that on there. It's sufficiently moist. Then all you gotta do is take your seed pack like this. I'm gonna open that. And I'll, I'll tend to these questions in just a moment. I wanna get to this uh, demonstration. All right. So then you take your seeds out here. You just wanna sprinkle them evenly about your tree. Just like that. Take your fingers like this. Just move it out the way so you can see. Spread it out. Get it nice and even. Fill in the gaps. So what you have in each seed pack is just like the right amount of seeds to get this tray. And you're gonna it's gonna be seeded quite heavily, so it's gonna look very nice when it grows. And you're gonna have a, a very nice harvest. So then after we do that, we come back with the filtered water. Just like this. Get those seeds uh, moistened. That way they will germinate.
soon. All right, just like that. Then I'm gonna take an extra tray I have here, put that on top, just like that. Use a water bottle to weigh it down, and that's it. I'll come back in 12 hours, moisten the seeds again, and we'll do it again. Uh, another thing I failed to mention earlier on this tray, this tray is now bottom watering. So, let me see here. You can see the roots right there. So I'm putting water into that bottom tray. Now the, the, the plant is getting all the hydration it needs through its root system that is uptaking from the water tray. So I just come back, you know, again in the morning and the evening, I check that water level to make sure there is sufficient water uh, in that tray to do what it needs to do. And just like that, it's that simple. And again, I grew this out of my my grill kit. Uh, it's not available on my site right this second, but it will be here very soon. So if there's something you want to find out about, I suggest you follow me here on TikTok. Uh, and also go to my link in bio and sign up for my, uh, my text group. And that way you can be notified when I release these products on the website. Uh, yeah, I bought this light from Amazon, but I also will have it available for purchase in the kit, like I showed you. So there'll be a kit without a light, a kit with a light. You may be asking, why would you sell the kit without a light? Because you don't have to use that. You can just use a window seal. You know, if you have a well lit window seal, use that. If you want to grow under artificial light, I'll make it easy for you. And also, don't feel discouraged if you don't want to wait on me or you want to do it a different way. I just want you to grow food. I'll just share anything I know to help you get started. I just want to offer the kits to make it a little easier and take some of the uh, trial and error out of the process. Uh, we get online on uh, Amazon again to answer your question. I feel like I didn't uh, answer it. You can just get on there and uh, search clip on LED grow lights and you'll see different options. Uh, I don't sell the seeds. I buy my seeds from True Leaf Market. But there will be a seed pack in there, like included. But what you can do is just go to trueleafmarket.com and you can buy non-GMO heirloom seeds. So what does that mean? The seeds have not been modified for industrial agriculture purposes, meaning this is how I interpret that. This has been my lived experience. I've been vegan for three years. It's really made a big impact in my life. Now, this is not a you should go vegan thing. I ain't one of them kind of people. You healthy, you happy, you wealthy. Do your thing, 21, do your thing. But for me, these heirloom seeds, non-GMO seeds mean that they do what nature intended them to do. They're gonna mature and they're gonna produce seeds. I like plants that are supposed to produce seeds to produce seeds. That means that they're virile, that they're strong, that they're healthy. And I believe if I eat things that are doing what they're supposed to do, it'll help me do what I'm supposed to do. And that's what healthy is for me. So whatever that means and looks like for you, do that. But that's why I recommend using non-GMO or little seeds. Uh, in the kit, I don't grow mushrooms yet, but I will be, uh, hopefully, this year. Uh, no, this is broccoli. Not alfalfa. Uh... The trays on Amazon, you can get like a 10 pack of them. There's different types. Just go type in microgreen trays. Uh, but as I was saying earlier, I will have a kit that has the substrate, a couple of trays, a couple of seeds, and this nice little spray bottle I just use to start this tray live. So we'll be tracking. I've started all four of these trays on my table on live over the last four or five days. Yep, broccoli sprouts. So, just so y'all know too, microgreens are not like a special seed. If I were to, you know, sow these in a different way, these will grow into a full broccoli plant over time. You know, the radish, same thing. So, I'll give you a quick rundown for people joining in. This is broccoli. This is what the people requested at that time. So, that's what I grew. This tray I have uh, purple radish and spicy salad mix so you can see these have been going for three days so this look like the last tray in another day or two 
uh, this tray I started the day after that and this is broccoli it's got a little bit of radish in there too but oh well it'll do what it do just fine and uh, so that's that tray and then this tray it was spicy salad mix so that's what I did Uh, it depends if you're asking do you need a license I can't speak to every state uh, here in Texas we have a lot of flexibility now, it's a very business friendly state agriculture friendly state so we have a, what's called the cottage food act which allows you to be a small scale producer seller of uh, food goods and produce without pretty much any regulation other than following a few simple rules uh, but I, I can't speak to what that might look like in your state Definitely, I'm not giving any legal advice uh, on here. That's right, you don't need a lot of yard. I'm growing microgreens. There you go, the cottage laws. So, yeah, that's all it takes. Everything you need. Let me zoom out. And by zoom out, I mean move this stuff back. This is all the space you need to grow food at home. This is like a little folding table. This is a little light I got from Amazon. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it like this. And that's all you need. You could be growing, I could probably grow six, seven trays on here a week. I might need to get another light, but hey, that's not a big deal. We can do that. No problem. Not a lot of space, not a lot of resources. Yep, it'd be great for your chickens. I have a buddy of mine that's starting to raise chickens here in, uh, I'm in Dallas, Texas. And I'll be helping him out with some microgreens. I don't eat eggs or anything. I just, he's my friend. So I'm helping him out. Now, uh, what's in the jar of water? This is just serving as a weight. Nope, I will not be transplanting these. These are just microgreens that I'm growing for consumption. So you can take most microgreens to full harvest in 7 to 10 days from what we just started. In 7 to 10 days, they'll be ready to harvest. I like to push it a little closer to 10 days because I like my plants to be a little bigger. But that's just my preference. What other questions do you all have? Here to be a resource, help more people grow more food at home. We've been talking about growing microgreens. Uh, I did a harvest vi video yesterday on live. If you want to check that video out, you can uh, go to my YouTube page, Urban Grower Supply on YouTube. So I just took the live from here and put that up on YouTube so you can see what we were talking about what we are doing uh, yesterday. So I harvested a pound of uh, sunflower and then about a half pound each of radish, pea, uh, broccoli, and spicy salad. Oh, dope. Duncanville. I'm just down the road from you in Cedar Hills. So South Dallas County. What it do? course you are so welcome i appreciate your support and your love right there um if you want to be notified of any products so part of my mission here to help people grow is to give information for sure but i also know how overwhelming it can feel when you're doing research in this what it do baby all the way coming from in this off uh, uh ellis or kaufman county but anyway um i appreciate the support but anyway what i was saying was i'll be offering products like these grow kits and grow lights and things that just help people uh get started and get scaling whether you want to just grow food at home or start your own small scale urban agriculture business i want to help you be able to do that because it's important you know food insecurity is a real thing and here's here's a little tidbit i like it like to share with people is you know 200 what's going on ag town uh you know 200 years ago almost everybody in this world used to be involved in growing food now we didn't have the technology that we have now tractors and mechanical things and all that but we did have people with the knowledge that knew how to grow food I'm not saying that was necessarily a better quality of life for people, but having that knowledge, knowing that I know how to grow food. I know how to maybe hunt. 
and fish and be self-sufficient. That's important. And over time, we've lost more and more of that kind of basic life skill, things that we need knowledge. A hundred years ago, half the people were involved in the production of food, food for humanity. And now it's like less than a couple percent. In fact, I was listening to a book. I didn't know this, but on the U.S. Census, farmer is no longer a separate occupation from what I read in this book. So it's like there's so few people doing it. The government's like, ah, we don't need to track that. That's crazy, right? So I just want to help people grow food. That way, if for some reason the supply chain is disrupted or you don't have access to the sorts of produce that you want, well, you can do it at home. Now, I don't know how to grow everything. I'm learning just like everybody else is learning. Life is one long learning experience. But if I can help provide infrastructure, products, and information or aggregate information that makes it easier, I want to do that. I'm open to collaborating with people that are good at things I'm not good with. This is all about helping people grow more food at home. That's what it's all about. You know, I grew up in a family. We have a family farm. Um, I've been in Texas for about a decade, but I'm from Arkansas. And uh, we have an 80-acre farm. And I never spent any time there because I ain't going to be doing that. You know, I was young, dumb, ignorant. But now that I'm older, I understand why my great uncles, you know, like to farm. Why my grandfather loved to garden, grow plants. One is therapeutic and two, that's an essential, essential skill. Hit me up. Hit me up. Uh, yeah, I do start a new tray. I mean, there might be like a few immature seeds or sprouts in there, but I don't let them like re-sprout. But anyway, that's what I'm all about. That's what this page is about. So I'm not going to say I'm never going to offer anything to sell. Uh, on this page, I will be offering th things to sell because I want to help you grow food. And sometimes you need a little bit more. Than information. Okay, from Ferndale. I'm from uh, from northeastern Arkansas, and I have a lot of family in central Arkansas, like the Little Rock area. Uh, my YouTube channel is same as this page, Urban Grower Supply. You go to my link in bio. Uh, if you go to my link tree at the bottom, like the social icons, it has a link that'll take you straight there. But on uh, here on uh, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, those are my three primary channels. I also have a Facebook group if you want to join that. Uh, but they're all urban grower supply urban grower supply everything's the same urban grower supply.com you know keeping it simple yeah don't let any don't let anything be the reason why you can't grow food even if you live in a you know an hoa subdivision you know you can still grow food in your house it's your house as long as you're not doing anything illegal that's your business you know, practice your rights, exercise your rights. Also, you can, uh, here's something I'm torn around with. Uh, I lived in Austin for about eight years before I moved here to, to Dallas. And uh, we're going to build us a home, another home here in Dallas within the next year. And at that home there are some HOA restrictions but I'm not going to let that stop me from doing my garden thing you know why because I'm going to understand the requirements and this is what I've understood the HOA just wants your, your yard to look nice and tidy maybe have some some uh, landscaping going on here's the thing a lot of edible plants are really pretty on their own and they produce pretty flowers so I'm going to make it do what it do. I'm going to be farming. And only only the people that know will know. <laughs> but I, what I'm not going to do, uh, and I feel convicted about this, is dump a bunch of resources to grow a green yard that's not doing me any good, it's not doing the environment any good, not doing the animals or pollinators any good. I'm going to make it do what it do. I know I can't change the world by myself, but I can do my part. And if you do your part, and if you do your part and the next person does their part, hey, we can make a significant difference. Make a significant difference. Uh, I don't know about, you know, how to keep all the rodents away. I'll be learning through that experience as well. And then also, I don't think that we have to keep, you know, squirrels and all that stuff away because they got to eat too. 
And the beautiful thing about when you're, you have biodiversity in any ecosystem, there'll be enough for you and enough for the other living beings in that ecosystem. You know? But do what you feel is best. I'm not here to preach about how you should or what you shouldn't do. I'm just telling you how I think about it. Yep. You know, that's a circle of life. You, you know, we spend so much money to eliminate all insects in our yards, but we need those insects. They are essential for soil health. Worms, ants, uh, things we call weeds. You know, you know having a, a, a lawn... Like, think about this. I don't know where you grew up. But where I grew up, I grew up in a rural area in Arkansas. Um, and there, it's like, when I was a kid, there was always, like, mixtures of grasses and what we may consider weeds in the yard. You know, up until the 80s, having clover, remember you go and be a kid? If you're a millennial or in the older generation, you might remember going on a clover hunt when you were a kid. Pretty hard to do now. Because we've monocultured all of our lines. But you're supposed to have that biodiversity. You should see worms up, you know, coming up on the sidewalk and all that. That's because that soil was alive and it was thriving. And I didn't understand that. You know, I was in, I had a lawn care business for over a decade. That was my first business that started when I was 10. So I was like, oh, you know, Green Law, we're going to do Bermuda, we're going to do St. Augustine, we're going to monoculture. I didn't know what that was at the time, but that's what I was advocating. But that's not good for the soil health. It's not good for the ecosystem in the yard where you live. You know, I was taking a walk the other day and I saw a yard that had like more mixed grasses and weeds and stuff. It greened up over two weeks faster than the yard right next to it that was straight monoculture Bermuda. You know why? Because the soil is healthier, it's alive. And when it's alive, those plants sprout into life much more quickly. They're much more resilient. They retain water better. There's more you know, microbes in the soil, you know, a lot of people don't like, you know, microbes and all that, germs and all that, but you need that. Because those microbes produce nutrients that your plants need. Good morning to you as well. You have a great day. And you got to have a microbe, you got to have the worms, you know, mushrooms, mycelium, that's all moving through your so soil. We need all that stuff. So we don't need to kill everything. I believe in create ecosystems. In fact, it's that's a goal of mine, and I, I believe that some of you will support me in this. You're already supporting me in it. Is this my goal to acquire a ranch here in Texas and make it a biodiversity ranch? People can come out and understand how we can be living more harmonious, uh, what's the word, partnership with the land, land that we've been so fortunate to be stewards of, not rulers of, but stewards of. Meaning that we're giving care. And as much as it takes care of it, we make an effort to take care of it. So, that's something I want to do. I want to invite people to come out. Have an experience. A ranch. A bio ranch experience. You know, have some animals out there. But not raising them so I can eat them. I'm vegan. So I'm not going to eat them anyway. But, so they can help to aid in promoting biodiversity on the land. They're going to eat matter from the land. They're going to excrete matter that they ate back onto the land with the microbes with it. That's going to help the soil. That's going to help, you know, sequester carbon, retain water. I'm just going to do my little part in my corner of paradise. I'm doing my little part now in the house. I'm going to do it in the yard. I got some cantaloupes growing outside. got some potatoes. You know, for years I wouldn't grow that stuff because, oh, man, I don't got the right sun angle. But guess what? The plants don't care. They was growing and moving and grooving for a hell of time before we started farming, doing agriculture. We psych ourselves up. And maybe it's because of what we see, what we read, what we feel, what we believe. But at the point, it's just not relevant. It's not necessarily true. Not everything that looks real is real. And in fact, you know, a lot of things that we say look real is just how we perceive it. It's how we built it up in our mind. That's right, we need coyotes and snakes. Even though I'm not a big fan of all, all these things, I'm learning to understand how essential a biodiverse, balanced ecosystem is for our health, for the planet, for plant life. It's just a better way for things to be. You know, I remember when I was a kid, my great-grandmother used to babysit me a lot. 
and uh, she had this knowledge of she was born in you know early 1900s her parents were born in the 1800s her grandmother was free during emancipation so it's like I knew people who knew people you know what I'm saying but anyway my great grandmother she would just know like oh yeah we can eat that plant oh uh, don't eat that I'll go back there and pull that down. We can turn it into greens. Oh, you got to get it before this time because it'll turn into this and turn into that. So she had this knowledge of how to feed herself through foraging. She had a garden. She knew how to plant food. And I didn't, you know, I didn't maximize those opportunities to learn with her and from my other elders in my family. But it doesn't mean I can't learn now. Because the beautiful thing is, as we've lost some of those quote-unquote informal, I just like to call them the traditional modes of education of learning from, you know, those came before us. We got the internet now and a lot of information has been compiled. So there's no reason why we can't learn. We can learn about every new social media trend, what's going on in politics. We can learn about whatever. But let's learn about how to take care of ourselves. Let's learn about how to grow food. Let's learn about not not to discuss what the better world will look like, but to, to create the better world, world that we want to see. And this is just my little, you know, corner of the deal. Helping people grow food. I think that's important. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm blessed. Why are you asking am I good? Yep, I agree. But yeah, I'm blessed. I'm real blessed. If you see me taking this because I have like tart of dyskinesia but that's a different thing it's getting better and i'm thankful for that so if that's what you're worried about uh, that's 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 like a little tick causes no ill effects in my life and i hope that you can all understand me clearly and it's not too distracting i'm going to continue to work on that and keep feeding my body with needs to heal but anyway i gotta get out of here get ready to start today We'll catch up again soon. Hey, over 10,000 likes on this live. Y'all are in just absolutely amazing. Uh, if you want to connect with me, follow me here on TikTok. If you want to, you know, be notified when I'm releasing products and, and doing interesting lives like Harvest and stuff like that, you know, go tap in with my text community. You can text the word microgreens, one word. To 469-256-3757. I appreciate you. Or you can go to my profile. And I receive that blessing. I really do appreciate that. Or you can go to my uh, my page. Click the link in bio. And hit the text button from my, uh, my link tree. Either way. Whatever works for you. But anyway. Look forward to continue to grow. Y'all stay lovely. Stay beautiful. Keep moving and grooving. Growing and going. We'll talk if not this evening. We'll talk tomorrow.